Okay, next chapter. It'll be chapter 46. Give me just a moment. This is a chapter from God's new book. He dictated to me as he dictated the Torah to Moses. And it was that, that's supposed to be believed by at least Orthodox Judaism. But what they don't know, I'm quite sure, is that he also dictated all the books of the prophets to the respective prophets in the book of the prophets. And there's about 20. And in all likelihood, he had some of those prophets also do Nehemiah, Ezra, Chronicles 1, Chronicles 2, etc. In the writing. Uh, well, that's because Kings is, uh, Samuel and Kings is in the prophets, isn't it? Oh, oh. Samuel 1 and 2, and maybe Kings 1 was probably written by King David. Who's ever the central character in the story? That's who you're supposed to think about, really. And all probability did. He, he really won't. He tells me there's some exceptions. Joshua, writing Joshua. Ooh, I'm going to get to 45. Um, and I'm sure Orthodox Judaism believes that for at least the reason there's no way Moses could know the information of the first five books of the Torah from which the Jewish people had derived 613 laws from God for, for the Jewish people. <laughs> and they're fanatical about it. It's a lot of things. Um, that they have to do. And they have a lot, they have an oral tradition to explain uh, basically rituals they've come up with because God didn't give enough description like Shabbat. Celebrate Shabbat. But then the question becomes, well, how? But he doesn't tell you. And that's the oral tradition, coming up with things like that. This book does not have anything to do basically with the Torah. We show you some things that are in there that uh, I'm sure you missed regarding God being in his spirit and what a man divine beings is. You can find it in the Exodus. And as Moses could not know that knowledge, this book is full of knowledge that no rabbi today has or in the history of Judaism. Man and divine beings. The Holy Spirit is a person. What a, a host of the Lord's host is. Uh, ten, there, are, there were no ten lost tribes. I mean, that's in Ezra. In any event, it's his book. Now, he gave it, and he did it for his chosen, the Jewish people. But it's his. And he had many purposes in that book. It's kind of like he created... He formed the Jewish people, and um, what? Oh, and Hebrew Bible is basically a, like a script for a reality television show. This is God's reality te television show. Created everything, and. Um, but he likes to be down here, and his reason for that is very hard to explain. I'm not going to try to do it here in the preamble. I'm having to do on every video. Um, <laughs> he told me to just go on. <laughs> oh, I couldn't know this information, okay, period. That's the proof. He gave Moses three proofs. He gave me three proofs. He's dictated two books to me. Okay, prophet like Moses. My knowledge of heaven that's in this book 
Elijah. Moshiach, his spirit of it upon me, entered me, and God is in his spirit. So did God. Chapter 11 of Isaiah, regarding the anointed one and verse, verse 1, just as well could have said, the spirit of God and God. Lit upon, and we find out in Ezekiel, lighting upon is the same as entering. <clears throat> the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. I became a man to bind things. It's everywhere in the Hebrew Bible, and they do not, your rabbis do not know that. Every prophet, 20 prophets, 20 books, every one was a man to bind things. Moses, clearly a man to bind things. David, man of divine beings. Elijah, man of divine beings. It's everywhere. Oh, well, it's because they're not in the book of the prophets. Nehemiah and Ezra, not a man of divine beings. That's why you had me say some of the prophets may have written those books. I see. Learn something new every day almost. Chapter 46, Psalm 2. In the day of the Lord. This is in parentheses. Now remember, God directs command. He'll tell me, put this in parentheses. Type the following. A commentary for today. This day of the Lord. And there's no question this is the day of the Lord. You got to put together four books to get there. But Jeremiah 31 is the big key. Because that takes you straight to Malachi 3 today. The lands bloom again, ruined cities restored, Jerusalem rebuilt. God has a new covenant, which is in a, really an amendment, confirmation, and affirmation of the covenant received through Moses with the addition of sin forgiveness. I'll tell you, but I've already talked about the what the modification is. It says in Malachi 3, be mindful of the laws I gave Moses at Horeb. Um, directions and rules, something like that. Uh, be mindful, okay. Originally it was strict adherence. God told the Israelites you had to do everything Moses says you were to do. And as I said, they derived 613, but of Orthodox, Conservative, and Reform, I don't know if they all f adhere to 613. I, that's just what God had me type. I don't even know where it comes from. I'm sure I saw it somewhere. Okay, a commentary for today, this day of the Lord. Verse 1. Oh. No, it's a psalm, isn't it? Or is it a chapter? Psalm number two. Verse one. Why do nations assemble and peoples plot vain things? In the Hebrew Bible, if you see nations, they're talking about the Gentiles, countries of the Gentiles. Okay, this is Midrash form. It's where I break down the verse and make commentary on the different parts. Why do nations assemble? Commentary. Anti-Semitism and hatred of the Jewish people. And peoples plot vain things. Commentary. Throughout the world, there are plans and schemes to destroy Israel and the Jewish people. Definitely in the Middle East. They just have a they're almost on the verge of war with Lebanon again. Two, verse two. Kings of the earth take their stand and regions intrigue together against the Lord and against his anointed. I am the righteous servant, Moshiach. I am the anointed of chapter 11. And Elijah, prophet like Moses. And the man's described in Isaiah 53. You can see that in the introduction. You'll learn a lot uh, 
Actually, didn't we just put the introduction in? It'll be coming up. It, it's there. You can find it. Uh, we always put a picture of a temple or what looks like a temple. And we change the picture after 50 to 60 videos because there's 50 to 60 chapters. And uh, it's kind of purplish. It's a little bit different than what we usually use. But uh, that that is these brand new ones. This is a brand new one. This will be the third time I've done the 50 plus chapters. Okay, kings of the earth take their stand. And regions intrigue together against the Lord and against his anointed. Y'all to have uh, Jews for Judaism, Michael Skoback, and everybody over there. Read this. Kings of the earth take their stand. Because he thinks these kings are going to exalt the Jewish people. His whole commentary claiming... Isaiah 53 describes Israel is ridiculous and an absurdity. You can find all that in chapter 23. It's on video. It's on a new video, too, with that purplish temple. Kings of the Earth, commentary. The world leaders and heads of nations, leaders of state and government organization, and those that promote anti-Semitism, and seek to convert Jews to Christianity. That would be Christians, of course. <laughs> Three. Let us break the cords of their yoke. Shake off their ropes from us. Let us break up the cords of their yoke. Kings. Commentary. Kings who take their stand and regions who intrigue together do not bind the Lord and his righteous servant. This is why is it? Oh, the description of the righteous servant in Isaiah 53 actually begins in chapter Isaiah chapter 52 verses 13 through 15 which are combined in quotes. This is 15. It's part of my commentary. Just so he shall startle many nations. That would be the righteous servant, Moshe. Kings shall be silenced because of him, for they shall see what has not been told them. Shall behold what they never have heard. I should think that's going <laughs> to... Well, yeah, actually, you can find it in Isaiah, but uh, uh, 53 proper. That statement's probably true for the rabbis. <laughs> if they're paying any attention, of course. I haven't heard from anybody. All the comments on my videos are critical. Rubbish, what the guy said. What did he say today? I'm sure he's a Christian. There's no, there's no information on his YouTube site. Nothing. He's been on YouTube for about five years. Rubbish. <laughs> Kings should be silenced because of him. Nations, the Gentiles, startled. And kings, leaders of nations, silenced. By seeing God's righteous servant, Moshe, oh, righteous servant, God's servant David, who is Moshe, a shepherd, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses, as one man. And hearing that God's righteous servant arise in the time to come of Jeremiah 31, in the day of the Lord. Yeah, there's a time to come in Jeremiah. There's three of them. What did I see I wanted to comment on? Oh, as one man. There are four. There, there, there's basically six prophecies 
unfulfilled in Hebrew Bible, this day of the Lord. God is here. He's returned to get me ready. Because he's going to return to his temple. Unfortunately, there's not one. In my capacity, uh, now Elijah the messenger is to clear the way for him. And he has to be recognized if we're going to get this done. Well, for some reason, they had not built it in 70 years. Your rabbis teaching world exaltation and love of the Jewish people, disavowing two billion Christians, disavowing Jesus. Two billion Muslims, disavowing Allah. And telling the Jewish people, going to worship with them and um, tell the Jews they've been right about God all along and they want to convert. Really. That is, that, that's his basis for Isaiah 53 being Israel, which is an absurdity. Can't be a Jew. Can I be all the Jews gathered as one man Israel? It describes, and God did this on purpose. And it's why he selected a Gentile. That would be me. At least today, he may have me convert in Jerusalem to Orthodox Judaism. But uh, Isaiah 53 describes a Gentile. Can't be Jesus. Can't be Israel. God, in Isaiah 63, God comes from Adam. Well known in Judaism. Well known. In the town, it's Christianity and Gentile lands. That's, that's what they think Adam means. Adam was founded by the children of Esau. That's the brother of Jacob who became Israel. And they never really got along with each other. And Esau never married a Jewish woman. All of his kids were Gentiles, and they founded Adam. Now, in the Exodus, Moses and the Israelite slaves, and God was with them, not allowed to pass through Adam. They had to go around, which means God had to go around, which means he's never come from Adam. But he has now, well, he's going to. We're still in Texas, Gentile lands, the land of Christianity, America. That, that, that's Saddam, Texas. Houston, Texas. Oh, he's been with me 16 years in the fire refinement, and I'm not going to explain what that is. You can figure it out. Go to the introduction and the books on chapters 21 and 22. You'll find everything you need to know about the fire refinement. And, of course, your rabbis won't have If you went up to your rabbi and said, what's the fire refinement? And if they hadn't seen any of this, um, I have no reason to believe anybody's reading the book right now to speak of. Every so often, somebody will get interested, but uh, they'll tell you, well, I, I don't know. As far as I know, that's not in the Hebrew Bible, but it is. Just not by those words. That's what God calls it. I call it God's boot camp for prophets, <laughs> particularly for the righteous servants. Now, it's all been explained before. Let's keep going. Okay, so everybody silenced and startled that there are four righteous servants to come and one man is all four. I was surprised too when they told me that. It took a little bit to sink in, but I get it now. Well, he's been with me 16 years. Was he going to go to the, another man who's going to be Elijah? And then where's the description of him? I have a, strict, uh, 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 a description of myself. But inside that description, you know what it says? He'll be shunned, despised, and held to no account. And they shall think of him as afflicted by God, smitten, and plagued. Which, of course, is true. <laughs> I was afflicted by God twice, disfigured at birth. Now, I don't think all the people of Israel gathered as one man. At any time, we're all disfigured. Afflicted by God. Well, when were they all crushed with disease? That's an affliction too from God. 
again, it's an absurdity to think. Isaiah 53 describes Israel. And it can't because of all Jewish people. It describes that he's coming from Adam. I didn't finish that. Thank you. It's coming from Adam, Gentile lands. And of the Jewish people, none are with him. But he's got to have his representation. His prophet like Moses, God covers the earth and so does his spirit. Okay, so especially he's everywhere at the same time. But you don't know where he is, his presence is, which is his mind. Without him having a man, or it could be a woman, but it's a man. That he can speak through, that he can tell what to say. And he's got to convince the Jewish people this is the man. And this book should do that. These videos should do that. And, and he tells me they will. This is where we're going to get to Israel. Basically through these videos. I, he won't tell me. I don't get to know anything that I could not figure out of my own. Which isn't much. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea how long it's going to take. I'm ready to go right now. So is God. So is the Holy Spirit. The angel of his presence. They're both right here. They're within me. And their presence fills this room. It, you, okay? Any uh, room I speak in once we're in Israel on these matters, I'm the only teacher he recognizes. He has reckoned with and dismissed all the rabbis before him who will not go into the school of members and they will not see the special Jewish heaven for the day of the Lord. It's got to be in that scroll. Because of their fallacies and false teachings of the rabbis of the Hebrew Bible, primarily. That may never heed God's prophet. That would be me. And God speaks to me and controls my thoughts, my words, my physical being and his power. Which you can find in Ezekiel. Okay. Startled in silence. Hearing that God's righteous servant arise in the time to come of Jeremiah 31, the day of the Lord. Startled in silence. That God's righteous servant is the only man to come. It was described in the scriptures and is inherently and implicitly the anointed one David, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses, of whom there is no description for identification. That the Jewish people throughout the world will be forgiven by God of all their iniquities and sins by God's written word, not human sacrifice or blood. In this day of the Lord, that's the covenant of sin forgiveness of Jeremiah 31. And it's been delivered to me. And God has put it in this book, along with the other covenant, unfulfilled. These two covenants and the four men are the six unfulfilled prophecies of the Hebrew Bible. Both to be delivered. Now, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I mean, never mind. Uh, anyway. Startled in silence that heaven is being created for only the Jewish people. Most people don't know that. Startled in silence that God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is a Gentile, according to the scripture, as I just explained. In the beginning, startled in silence that Jesus, being a Jew, cannot be God's righteous servant. That's why he picked a Gentile. He knew what the Gentiles were going to do. Jewish people. He was on the... He knows everything about him, creation from the beginning to the very end. Now, he won't tell me how it ends. I just know one day the sun's going to go out, so there will be an end someday. Silence and subtle that God's righteous servant is familiar with disease and crushed with disease blemished 
And that's put in there on purpose to show the Christians. And this is what the man goes through of 53. Jesus is said to be perfect. Never sick. This man is crushed with sickness in their book, but the sickness exposes him to death. With me it was cancer. But I had been given long life in the power of God. That story's out there. Go, I say 22, chapter 22, is geared towards showing how Jesus doesn't fit the verses. He's definitely not in the first 11, but he might be in the first. <laughs> yeah, but all mankind in 12 is counted as a sinner. He was a sinner. God, he, according to God, he told the greatest lie and deceit in the history of mankind because of the number of people deceived. There's two billion Christians right now that were deceived. There is no Jesus. He's a myth. You ought to see God's arguing on that. Uh, it's the one that has the scenes of the Dead Sea Scrolls personifying Jesus Christ, but never wrote one word about him. And they would have. They even had a gate to Jerusalem. They didn't know he was walking around on water and claiming to be the man of Isaiah 53. Read 22. You just shake your head. How on earth can the Christians, the Gentiles, read this and see it covers Jesus Christ? This guy's given a long life. Crushed with disease. Sees his children. Jesus didn't have children. And their answer is, well, who else can it be? Because of all those words, wounded, punished. See, it's a setup. Isaiah 53 has so many purposes. Well, God needed them to be familiar with his laws. You know, like the Ten Commandments. Because of the Holocaust. Because he knew America, as wealthy as that land is, this land is, needed to have Christians. You could say he almost created it. By the way, he wrote 53. But he's here to tear down the cornerstones with me. And all his great knowledge. I thought the Jewish people would be happy. Because they've had to listen to Christians forever say they don't know how to read the book. It's prophetic of Jesus Christ. I'll tear that down to nothing. And if they lift me up and say, hey, Christians, because God's wrath is on them now. Hey, Christians. This is the man of Isaiah 11, Moshe, that you call Messiah. And it can't be your God. He doesn't come from the stump of Jesse. It comes from the banished, felled ancestral tree of the kings of Judah. Banished. Felled. Well, that's why there's a stump in Isaiah 11. It's the only ancestral tree that we have to speak of. And that begins in the New Testament on the first page. In the book of Matthew. And I think it starts from Adam, if I remember right. Okay, and can that, okay. Crushed with disease, blemish, and can never be an offer for sacrifice. That uh, sorrow in silence, that a host of the Lord's host is a man in divine beings. Startled in silence. That the captain of the Lord's host is a Gentile host of the Lord's host and a harbinger of God's righteous servant. That would be me. He is. Joshua asked him, Are you one of us or of the enemy? And he says, No. I am the captain of the Lord's host. Now I have come. And it's just three verses. But you can glean from those three verses, and this is on many other videos, that he's a man of divine beings. And that God is that present, and where God is, the angel of his presence is. Would you? Oh, but basic bottom line is, we never hear from him again after those three verses. Harbinger, an omen, a sign of who Moshiach will be. Start 